doing today hey, welcome yeah, to weekend do patience you yeah. got this yes i do okay why do people bank with financial institutions what role do they play in our lives banking is a vital aspect of our financial livelihood be it a corporate organization individuals or big or small businesses banking is essential now, people trust banks because they are the institutions accredited by the government and they have the license to keep and safeguard our income. In Nigeria, to pay and um, the fees for financial services are regulated by the central bank, the CBN, which is the APEX bank in Nigeria. And, but the big question here is, are these policy people friendly? Or should I say, are these policies pocket friendly? That is one of the big questions we'll be answering onto the show. Like I always say, on the show we can deal. We deal in matters that concerns you and I. If it will improve us as individuals or if it will help our nation to develop, we will deal. And that's why we are here weekend in and weekend out. And this weekend, trust me, it's not different because our focus is on the financial institution. My name is Patience Eloi Abba, and this is Weekend Deal, your favorite weekend show on TV, coming to you from the network service of the NCA. I am delighted you have joined us on today's show. I am delighted, but there's someone here who's equally or almost as delighted. <laughs> <laughs> wow, uh, it's another fantastic day, patients. And last week we were doing um, we were Hajia Pishana too, Hajia Thelmana too. This week we have the singular privilege and honor to pose as bankers. <laughs> okay, let's say we're banking trainees. Yes. <laughs> Because the information we'll be handling today mm. is not uh, usually a typical, you know, five and six. But we'll bring it to the fore because when we hear uh, issues that come up, it now becomes like a recurring decimal, not just in the FCT. We oh. hear about it in Lagos, in Oweri, in Aba, you know, in Benin City, in Imo, everywhere. But Harcourt, we say, okay, we don't know for sure. We don't want to uh, assume or put a confirmation on it, we yeah. bring it to this family table, this weekend deal table, where together we we'll address it. And we have the privilege also to have experts who will be in the house <laughs> to put their final sale. That is preferred solutions. You know that uh, there's no free lunch in Freetown, let alone in Nigeria. Good thing that Nigerians are hardworking and resilient people. They work on the daily. Many people work 9 to 9, 9 to 12, 9 to 10. Talking about AM and PM to bring in the bread. You know I don't mean physical bread. You know that. I mean money. So when the money seems not to add up, they have good cause to worry. Because I'm putting my money in a system where I ought to have the utmost trust. And it's not adding up. Is somebody taking their coins? Take, for example, you put money in an account. And for reasons you can't seem to decipher or understand, you wake up one morning and the money is not there. And some people ask you to start running from pillar to post. Sometimes you have to utilize the assistance of social media. It could take months before you get your pennies back. And somebody will tell you they don't know the account you went to or they don't have access to the account your money traveled to. And it could literally be your life savings. I'll give another example. You are a civil servant. You're working hard, putting aside something. Perhaps you are paying fees for some people. And you give an executive order to a bank where you receive your monthly stipend and say every month pay out so so and so to different people your your account is debited 
but the people you expect uh, to receive the resources don't get it. So one part of executive order is carried and the other part is ignored. Is it because of a lack of proper hearing? Or take for example, someone is in mourning, you've just lost a spouse, you have to untake Remove your mourning garments to start fighting for your spousal savings. That is cause for worry. It's for these reasons and many others that we're talking today about Nigerians being shortchanged by financial institutions. We don't know if it is true or not. We want you to partake today. Send in your real life experiences. Let's bring it to bed to nourish and furnish our package so our experts can put that seal that expertise about banking and financial institutions. Welcome to Weekend Deal. My name is Thelma Obaz. We got you, and I know you got us as well. Get your messages coming in. Weekend Deal. It's Weekend Deal. You're watching us just like always. Saturdays and Sundays we're here for you. We know you'll show up, so we turn up. We come up with authentic information, real time so that you can earmark the part that concerns you and give us relevant and authentic information. Today, it's all about you once more. Talking about shortchanging Nigerians. Is it true? Is this the real situation? We special focus on financial institution. And good thing, Uju has put together a very detailed background feature to set the tone for our conversation and analysis today on Weekend. Uju, Please share what you found. Banks, critical intermediary in effecting financial transactions. Banks provide such facilities as savings, loans, credit, draft, and advisory. And we can deal today. Conversation at breakfast between our guests at home educates on the integral role of banks in our lives. The banks do a variety of things which they call their products and those products include savings that is collect money from people and then in lending give out this money they collected to the public and um, they've even expanded to insurance these days they have these mutual funds where aggregate of funds are put together and used in investments which they expect to get money so a whole a whole lot is going on today in the banking world. The banking industry is a business. Yeah? It's a business like every other kind of business. And we can't keep our business at home. Or, you know, so it's it's much less stress for us, you know, to keep our money in the bank. So they're providing a service, they're providing bank services to the customers. This bank and their um, charges lately is becoming frustrating on time, you know. Do you know, um, the last time I went to this previous agent to make a transaction, and I gave her my card. I said, please help me withdraw 2,000 here. She said, insufficient balance. I said, there is 2,000 here in that account, please help me withdraw. She said, insufficient balance, ready for, uh, for the second time. I said, okay, let me check my balance and show you now. I was even in a boasting that I have money now. Only for me to check. And I discovered I was not seeing 1,950. Where did the 15 I go to? Only for me to be seeing electric, electronic, whatever, levy, whatever. You know, I thought it was <laughs> only me. My brother. But I've been experiencing the same thing. Oh. In fact, the <laughs> only is better. I went to the ATM. I slot my ATM card in. I withdrew. But the money did not come, but that was baby dead. So now I have to go to the bank to go and apply for the fund. And like the thing is, it's too much these days. Sometimes I, I will just be at home and then notice that I'm, I'm receiving debit allowance. Thank you. At first, you think it's debit allowance only Thank for you. you. Just open, you'll be seeing debit, uh, maintenance, maintenance for this. Ah. And I'm like, we are banking with you because we need these services and in return now it's like them. we are the one maintaining thank the bank. you they are meant so, to say help us save this money now so what's going on i don't understand ah rather than patronizing this bank it's like 
what we are it's like we the adult we'll go back to the old thank you oh, because that one is better nobody will charge you anything see as i'm leaving here now i will branch the capital uh, capital shop around, yeah. along the road yes. so that you can carve me another box you let me start saving my money because nobody will charge me anything yeah. when i'm using that one For the traditional bank, it's very understandable because there are a lot of expenses that are going to it. For example, printing of the papers for them to make the draft or um, for you to make the deposit or whatever. Um, and also the staffs also that are there. So these charges are in, um, put in there for them to maintain the payment of staff fees and also other expenses that they may incur. So it's understandable at the same time, but at the same time, it's this whole charges affects the consumer at the ending for businesses because when these charges are being put on the um, business people and the um, producers, they have to change to how they have to impose those charges as well on the consumers. Financial institutions shortchanging Nigerians becomes our focus today on Weekend Deal. Thank you so much, Uju. Um, there's this thing that um, I'm sure it worries a whole lot of us. You are expecting an inflow, maybe salary. And then just as you expect, you get an alert. You run to your phone. And then you read, five naira deducted for something, something, something. That pain, you have to feel it to know it. Well, joining the conversation now is NTA Network Center, and uh, the focus is on navigating the dynamics of additional banking affairs. Amidst the struggle for survival of the hard-working people of Lagos State to make ends meet is an additional enemy tagged the Invincible Four short-changing negotiations on a daily basis in the name of such charges in the banking and finance sector of the Nigerian economy. As a bank customer, you have to be conscious of the various charges that the banks, you know, put on you, like SMS charges, uh, account maintenance charges, uh, turnover charges. There are standards for it. You have those that are key to the fine details of the rules, and whatever um, late or uh, fee that they agree with their customers for the chance. But we're also aware that there are some banks that mark up the commissions and fees they charge their customers, knowing or assuming that the customers will never have the detailed knowledge to compute and validate those figures. As Lagosians strive for financial security, these sort charges are seen as obstacles to the will of progress of an average Nigerian. For each transaction you make, you can see some charges, SMS charges and everything. And sometimes you can't really get the accurate calculation of these charges. You understand? Sometimes when you visit the bank, so the customer care to lay a complaint and you, you, they will tell you that, okay, each transaction, you charges and POS. And sometimes even the bank themselves can't really trace the charges. Most especially the charges that is done from POS. It's very, very, very difficult to trace. And you find out that you lay a complaint, the bank cannot provide any solution on that. The banks are created so that you'll be able to have a secure place for your fund. But right now, the bank is using the opportunity they have to take your money and keep it for you to extort you to a level that you will not even be able to get anything in return. Look at even the domiciliary accounts. You put 1,000 naira in your domiciliary account. And next week, you, and next week you want to withdraw the money. They will tell you they cannot give you 1,000 naira completely. Before they withdraw all the charges, charges in that 1,000 naira, what you'll be getting is about 800 naira from the 1,000 uh, 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 dollars that you have put there. It has happened to me. I put 500 dollars in the domiciliary account with the hope keeping it for the rainy day. And when I have an issue, I wanted to withdraw it. What I got from that money was not even up to 300 dollars. Financial literacy, consumer advocacy, competition, innovation, and digital banking solutions, experts say, are the way forward from these multiple additional fees deduction from Lagosian's account daily. I think banking innovation will be one of the shortest routes to addressing this problem. Technology, in the sense that uh, uh, main accounting packages today, the providers of the packages must should. Uh, imbue into their accounting packages 
uh, basis for computation of uh, bank charges, including fees on loans, interest rate on loans, so that if this is built into the system, the system will uh, go through the transactions values or the turnover of the customer and use as a basis to know if the customer was rightly charged or not. Every Nigerian, every bank customer, you must be conscious and be ready, be vigilant on whatever is happening on your account. Because now we are moving towards, you know, advanced level in digital economy in Nigeria. Everything, you can do multiple transactions from the comfort of your home on your phone. But as you are doing it, you are, you are, you are being charged for various things. At times, even when you receive money, the bank will charge you. When you make transactions, the bank will charge you. There are a lot of double taxation. CBN has to look at the plight of the banking customer and look at how to harmonize the bank charges. As Lagosians yearn for a lasting solution to these endless sort charges, it is hoped that the banking and finance sector of the Nigerian economy will be more transparent and fair in all transactions. You're watching Weekend Deal. We are wondering here today if Nigerians are being shortchanged by financial institutions. We say we cannot assume that that is the case until we fully analyze it and investigate it to the best of our ability. That's why we have experts in the house today. So it's that vigilance that's brought us to the point where we are today. Let's welcome our guest first. We'll meet, greet, and welcome Chukudi James Okoria for he's a business analyst and a management consultant. James, you're welcome to the Weekend Deal Studios. Thank you very much. Uh, it's a pleasure having me. Uh, feel good having you here, too. Mm -hmm. So joining the conversation is an, it's another guest who has actually paid her dues in the banking sector. She's worked in various banks, and today uh, she is a business analyst and management. No, she is a former banker, CEO, Master Coach Hub Limited. She says she's also a public speaker and a trainer. Please join me to welcome Dr. Aisha Adebiroku. Did I get that right? Let's see her profile. <music> Welcome to Weekend Deal, Dr. Aishat. Thank you very it's much. It's great to have your excellent company here today alongside uh, Mazi Okoria for We've been told to be vigilant, especially about that very important part, our accounts. 
our hard work, our resilience put in the bank. You know, we want them to save it for us and uh, where necessary, where they can, give us our interest and profits and all of that. We won't talk about how we hardly see any profit on top of the money. <laughs> Our quarrel now is that the money is not even complete. Okay. Um, coach and certified teacher. Polymath as well. Heavy. You are loaded. Welcome to our conversation. Now, let me just uh, start. Let me, let, let's go light. The one that we really notice we talk about is the constant subtraction. Mm. And it may be small, small figures. 25 mm. naira here, 50 naira there, 100 naira there. But when it adds up... <laughs> That 10,000 or 50,000 is now 49,000, mm -hmm. sometimes after a day. And if mm -hmm. that happens for like a week or a month, you can imagine, it could become 45,000. It's no longer complete. Okay. Tell us the whys. Do they select people they want to be taking that money from? Or is it across <laughs> the board? Is it all banks doing it? Why are they doing it? Is it in our best healthy interest? Okay. Thank you so much for the question. I can understand, you know, um, some of the pains that go with, you know, every time when you check your account, 15 naira is less, 25 naira is less, and by the time you know it, it has added up, like you said. Um, some of the charges are, um, would ha we have transfer charges, we have stamp duties, we have um, PO, uh, ATM yeah. uh, charges, SMS. especially if you're using, if you're using um, another bank's oh, ATM yeah. machine. Mm. Yes. Then we have SMS charges. So these are, and then we have maintenance fee. These are some of the charges that, you know, make those, uh, your balances go <laughs> below <laughs> what you went to sleep with mm. last night. Mm. And um, it is noteworthy that no bank should you know, um, institute any charges without CBN's approval. Otherwise, the bank will, should be sanctioned. This is the standard. But what do we find? We find that there are some strange, you know, charges, especially POS charges these days. And then POS transactions are not, you know, as straightforward as we have other uh, transactions ATM transactions are straightforward. If it's SMS, you know it's SMS. So, yeah. And um, I, I spoke to some, you know, bankers who are still in the sector, and they said some of the core challenges have to do with POS transactions because there are a lot of handshakes that go on between banks that are not automated. You know, some of, most of these charges are automated, but uh, I was made to understand by some bankers that some of these POS transactions have not been automated because there is no handshake between bank A and bank B. Hmm. And this has caused a lot of issues with resolution of POS challenges. I have worked in various departments in the bank. I have worked in domestic operations. These are, this is where we actually do the settlement for uh, failed transactions. Oh, okay. So um, most of it has been automated. Uh, I have worked with um, a customer service. You know, we are the ones that receive the complaints for the, from the customer. If after 48 hours your money has not been reversed, reversed. your field transactions have not been reversed, you need to walk into your bank and complete a form. Some banks have even taken this online where you don't need to walk into the branches to, uh, to get complain. your field transactions resolved. Okay. So these are some of the challenges. What are some of the ways that, you know, customers can uh, tackle these challenges? You can bulk your transaction so that you can monitor it real time educate yourself on the charges that have been uh, approved by cbn so that you know when you're being charged you know um indiscriminately yes so that you know when you're being charged indiscriminately and then you can also um tell your bank to send you email alerts instead of sms alerts that are being charged oh. so if you if you do if you do 10 transactions in a day and you're ch charged you know all of that sms alerts that means your balances will go down but you can maximize the use of email alerts and also you can maximize the use of mobile uh banking apps where you can monitor your accounts and even check your statements real time to see what is coming in and what is going out and why but how come these ATM machines, the ATM, ha never have money these days? 
There are some streets to... in um, even Garaki here. Before you could just drive from your office, go to the ATM, with your money, come back. Mm. Now, even some offices have people who are using POS. Because if you drive around this Garaki area sometimes, one hour you go around, maybe one, only one ATM will have money in it. And they'll be disbursing 5,000. You can't withdraw more than 5,000 at, at a time. We should consider the operating environment we are in Nigeria. How do this bank leverage when you have to run diesel 24 hours, when your staff reach you, the overhead costs, your balance sheets, everything? You have to look for innovative way to make money. That's okay. Okay, look at the FX market we are talking about. There was a time when you go to the BGCs, the rate is even cheaper than the bank. No, give so, us no, I'm, I'm just trying to go I'm down to layman's terms. <laughs> as in, don't go to okay, big if, grammar. If, okay, ATM. <laughs> There's no money. There used to be money. That's why we used to go oh, there. Yeah. Now there is none. Okay. All of it's okay. let's, let's, let's language that we can okay, align let's, with. Let's start it this way. Before the scarcity of money in this ATM, were there individual POS operators in the streets? No. When the individual operators POS came on the street, then the money in the in the ATM started I becoming scarce. That means. There's something happening that the regulators Allegedly. need to see, need to ask, and need to investigate. But I'm saying that anybody who want to do leverage on his costs or want to reduce the cost, if you have to find another way to make money other than doing it the normal way. And I'm saying that the, because of the cost of running business, banking business in Nigeria, people have to create creative ways of making money so, the so i'm POS, not saying it so the pos <laughs> operator and the bank yes, are in alignment there is, there is they are business synergy. partners there's a synergy obviously and then, uh, still and on then the may i mention again that like he said it <laughs> takes a lot to actually maintain those ATMs. Yeah. You have to have staff capacity yes, and some banks it. are actually not investing enough in staffing and training mm -hmm. of staff to man those ATMs. See, they should close down. If you're not ready for business, don't go into business. If you can't take but the But our hits, money is in there. Our, our money is in there. there. So if they can't take the heat... So that means they might have to charge like more. Like he said, <laughs> regulators need to <laughs> actually ask the banks what is happening. happening. Exactly. Because they are the ones that are in charge of the monetary policy and they are in charge of ensuring that consumers yes. have access to their cash in the most convenient yes. manner possible and at the cheapest Wait, yes. I agree. Still on the POS, our colleague uh, Magdalene is asking this question. She says, why does it take so long for reversal when there's a POS um, uh, issue with uh, money that is not, that did not, a transaction that, a failed transaction? For the POS, it takes so long. Why? You've been in that, I just think, can you talk a little about that? It's still about automation. 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 POS mm -hmm. is not no, as automated as, as, as the other channels. Mm. That so one. it's, um, like I said, mm. you know, um, I also spoke to some current bankers. Mm -hmm. I know that this was the challenge, but to ensure that, what yes, that is really the challenge. Train. I spoke to some current okay. bankers. They come, look, what's happening to POS transactions? And they said, some of these POS transactions, the process flow is it not is automated. automated. So it takes a human being to, to go through it. maybe 10,000 transactions to spot true. a failed transaction and, and reverse it, it manually. It takes time. Doctor, take it Is the cashless take system it. working in our best interest? Uh, you see, 1, um, okay. Okay. about 25 naira, we now have 1,000 naira. If you okay. look at the checkered history of banking, mm. all the way from Mesopotamia mm. through the Roman and, and in the 17th century when bank was uh, modernized, recently bank is going through technology, what we call fintech. Yeah. And we can't continue to bank the way we banked some years back. Mm -hmm. So it takes a lot. And we are looking at having a digital economy and we want a situation where people, you know, before, mm, 2000, before 2000 and, uh, 1999, you have to go to your branch where you keep your money mm. to go and withdraw your money. Yes, no. You cannot have money in the same bank and go to another state and get it. But because of the fintech, you can put money here and collect it anywhere, anywhere. in the world. Mm -hmm. And it comes with a price. It comes with a cost. See, it's capital intensive. And also, we must also know that we are not working in different... End the banking sector is what we call the banking... banking uh, that we have connection. Mm. So 
when bank has come to, after you do transaction and they come to interbanking okay. transaction okay this is what came through our bank this is at the interest accrue all those things as she said it's been automated we they want a situation where human beings will not be interfering with banking where everything is done automatically and everybody generates his phone now to answer my brother if the bank is charging you that amount it is being ordered by it's a guideline that the central bank has given them to charge you and sometimes like she said you can't do transaction repeatedly why not make up your mind say i want to do one of the transactions or find a way to make the transaction smaller because for every time you use the bank there are plugins from other banks there are things vat there are things that they have put into that system that takes the money the bank is paying for the electricity bank is paying for the but staff it, so there's so much cost. let me quickly when you talk about cost cost mm. cost you think that these banks are not doing business without money these banks are into all manner of trades forex trades they're making so much money i mean they declare a whole lot of um, trillions uh, trillions of naira in, in, in profit making so it's not as if it's just our money it's they use yes our monies are there and they use it to trade so why are we paying through our noses because they have for their operations couldn't they just be a bit benevolent? And say, All okay, Nigerians are facing that challenge with run operations now. Yeah, they are all paying so. the same bills they are paying. I will still go back to what Dr. Aisha said. She said the banking system is supposed to find ways, innovative and ingenious ways to make banking comfortable Please. and convenient for the Nigerian. When it becomes more of the alternative or the reverse, there's a challenge. We know there are reasons. We are saying do better. When you know that Nigerians are uncomfortable, you know they are losing so much, find ways to make it more comfortable. I'll come back. Okay. There's a <laughs> message here from Miriam Mustafa. She says, why are we saving money in the banks without profit? I remember when I started working many about 20 something years ago, mm. for 1,000, I will see 1,059. Now, your money is just go and put and collect. Go and put and collect. Mm. 50 couple will not join. <laughs> so Marian, I join you in it too. You are perplexed as well. Dr. Asha, what about our first? interest? Actually, <laughs> banks do pay interest. Is the money so busy? <laughs> <laughs> there is a way it is calculated. Okay. So it will depend on your time. current balance oh. as at the time okay. the rates are being calculated. Okay. So um, for conventional banks, it's interest. For non-interest banks, it's mm. profit you get yeah. on your savings account. And remember again that if you're operating a current account, mm -hmm. you should not expect savings interest or profit yes. on that account. I know about the current not yeah. getting profit. Even yeah. the savings, it's savings now. Yeah. The whole year. Okay. <laughs> And uh, it also talks about the duration you drop, you left the money in that account. How yes. long you left, left it. the money in that yes. account. That's the it will be very small now, but there will still be small there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's why it's not enough to generate interest. <laughs> well, hold it. We'll go on a break. Nigerians have woken up. Oh. <laughs> so let's, yeah, go break our back. let's go on a break quickly. We'll be right back. <laughs> Nigerians, you are waking up. Thank you so much for your messages. They are coming in in their numbers and we'll take as many as we can. But now to further nourish our discourse, we're going to Ibadan. And guess what? It's all about embracing digital banking alternatives to mitigate the impact. <laughs> We've brought the word mitigating. That means there's a challenge on ground to mitigate the impact of surcharging. Ibadan, please take it from here. Events of technology in banking sector has revolutionized the banking experience among Nigerians. The introduction of banking technological interface like mobile apps, online banking, USSD, digital wallet, POS, among others, has in one way or the other reduced the stress of physical presence in bank to perform transactions and it has also greatly reduced the effect of unnecessary surcharging. The transformation in the financial landscape in Nigeria has a lot to do with influx of smartphones, computers, presence of internet, which makes it easy for users to manage their finances and conduct transactions on the go. How are the various digital banking platforms being able to provide cost-effective options in conducting transactions. 
It has helped eliminate stress going to the bank, joining the regular bank queue and waste of time and all that. So with the mobile app, I could just be at the comfort of my home and do my transactions. And even with that, it has actually helped large transfer of, um, of transaction. Instead of carrying bulk money from one end to the other, being I have an access to my mobile banking, I could just easily do my transactions with little charges being attached to it. In cases of rural areas, undeveloped places, with the mobile app, it can easily have access to your banking and instead of traveling 20 kilometers just for a basic transaction it can be done at the comfort of your home it's about the subcharging i would still prefer to do it on my phone because charging 10 naira 25 naira on my phone is not going to cost me more compared to when i go to the bank the transfer fare and even the charges will even be much more than when i use my app so I will always love to use my app anytime, any day. As a matter of fact, accessing digital banking platforms in Nigeria has been quite challenging. Definitely, if I don't have data or if the network is very poor, like I won't be able to have access to my money and to do transactions. Number one disadvantage of using the mobile app is um, digital literacy. A lot of us really don't know the rules that guide the online transactions or even not just the online transactions that guide us using the internet. Some people could just log in, do their transactions and forget to log out, which leads to fraud and scams. Cybercrime actually spans through a lot of platforms. We talk about websites and phishing, you know, malware. Sometimes you just see unauthorized messages coming through your phone. Those messages are coming in just because someone is at the back end trying to you know to come into your into your platform into your system to break in and you know and cut away a lot of things that you are not authorizing them to do now they don't have full access sometimes but on the long run when they come in through the door somebody has to open which is why sometimes you will receive calls text messages telling you to do this and to do that observers are of the opinion that for customers to really enjoy digital financial platforms Certain rules must be put in place to sanitize the digital banking sector, especially the online and internet transactions. This will curb fraudulent siphoning of hard-earned money of customers by unscrupulous banking staff and internet fraudsters. Indeed, many people are of the opinion that digital banking alternatives has provided one of the best banking experience for customers of financial institutions. Uh, thank you so much, NTA. But an online banking, banking has its uh, pros and cons. And uh, we'll continue the conversation here. Talking about online banking, there's something I've never understood. Maybe today I would understand. When somebody's account is being attacked, monies are taken out of your account. Maybe you lost your phone or something. And then the bank say they don't know they can't get it back. I'm thinking, is there no apparatus in the banking system where my body, money is taken? And they look at it because it's traceable. It entered an account. It didn't, it didn't go into the air. Mm -hmm. And it's okay, it's in bank. It's an account. This, this, this. Why can't it be reversed back to me? People have lost their money. We've seen people go to the bank and naked to cry that, oh, all my savings of 15 million. Somebody wiped it. Why can't this money be traced and retrieved with our BVNs and all? Uh, let me start with uh, yeah. Mazi. You see, uh, our banking technology, especially our fintech, sometimes are off-shelf. Uh, we buy them. It's, they are, some of them are not customized. You see them, um, they buy some of these uh, back end of the banking transactions that the fintech, the technology we use mm. in banking. And these are done by people from probably India and quite a number of other places. Some of the uh, generic passwords are not changed. So the people who build it, the, the experts who know about it, our um, cyber, our state uh, of... Mazi, 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 Our cyber security. But when do we get there now? So that's why we say that. We Mazi, what you are saying, is it authentic? You I'm, telling you from, uh, um, I'm telling you from... I'm telling you from... 
IT experts. Mm. The people who built this are generic. Some of the softwares are generic. They are not customized. They were not deployed to that bank. And they take it off shelf and put it in a bank and has generic. So you see a lot of young men, all these frosters, internet frosters can break into it and do a lot of things. Mm. And most of the money reversing, some of this money uh. are taken offshore. Oh. Mazi, can I ask you something? Most times. So Mazi, that's why, yeah, I'm listening. It, sorry, it's, uh, as, as you're saying that thing, mm. please, it's not sitting well. It's mm. not even sitting. That story can stand. You mean you are holding the money of over 100 million people who are working relentlessly day in, day out, some putting in 20 hours every day to put that money in your bank, and you're telling me they are buying something off the shelf? But sorry, how come it's some... It's a segment of people whose money can be withdrawn like that. It can happen to the elites. It okay. can happen to the upper class that their money will be taken like that with that fintech thing you're telling us. Can I Do it happen to people they yes. seem yes. don't have any, mm. any security? So one of the core challenges with this sort of transactions mm. is that some of the banking apps of individuals have been compromised yes. by an insider Inside that the is bank. in their own network, not even bank related. Yeah, exactly. So if you're careless with your pa the password to your mobile yeah. banking app or your internet... Uh, or your SIM cards or, and or And somebody in your own network mm. can pass with it and transfers your money, then it's, it's very... It, it, yes, it's like... That's why they said that um, your password is your so underwear. You should not give it to anybody. Yeah. It should be private. <laughs> yeah, maybe Very if you private. transact online, like if you do any online thing, maybe yes. online purchase, does and that make it more vulnerable? But there are no, cases of people who have, have never be, purchased you, anything. You have to be careful with even your family members that look yes. over your shoulders. Oh. And you know, a lot of people these days, they give their password to their loved ones. I even know of some people who give their password to pure operators. Mm. They will say, oh yeah, Artists. remove money from me. I mean, remove made. money from me. So you don't expect the banks to go chasing out of your own carelessness yes, yes. to go chasing your money. But again, there is a process in place. Yeah. Ensure that you escalate to consumer protection in the CBN. They can okay. help with this to make the process easier okay. for you to recover your funds. But once again, like he said, some of these funds are sent offshore. Sure. So it takes a lot to, to, to recover to it back. It back. Yes. Hmm. But we see the case of um, the actress Shan George when her, her money was wiped and she cried on social media. Mm. And within how many hours, she smiled back to us and said, my money is back. What well, happened? Some, <laughs> of, some of those things, what, the bank, bank do, is bank, what the bank do, do is bank, damage, uh, control. The, the damage control. They, they, they give bank. the money and then okay. they, go they, 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 they go bring it. They bring it. Every, every, okay. every, bank, every bank has a fraud desk Sick that desk. is in charge of this. Do you know to the extent that, you know, there was a particular guy when the banks were not doing what he wanted them to do, he brought in foreign experts to trace his mm. money and they traced it. Because the money was something huge, I'm sure. Yes. And also, Thankfully. And also we should note something. Most of our banking technicians, bank fintech technicians, most this jackpot syndrome has also taken yes, a I lot of them that. out. out. Yes, yes. Yes. And, and also that's what I was trying to say, okay. that some of these brain passwords brain. has not been changed. I read out three <laughs> messages. One said every time you check your balance, they, they, deduct. they, take, they deduct something from, from what you're doing. One also said that the policies seem not to fit the times because the monies we put in are less and we need them more. Yet the charges seem to be increasing. They are taking more consistently and the amount being taken is even more at one time. For the consumer, use other channels. For CPN, check what can be done in this respect. For banks... How can you become more, you know, how can you have more uh, unique selling propositions that would make consumers patronize you by looking at some of these charges and, you know, waiving them and, what, and look at the um, benefits that may likely accrue from this. More patronage, perhaps, which will boost your balance sheet. Yeah, thank, Alice, you. yeah thank you so much. That was uh, brilliantly thank said. You. We know that there's thank so much you. money in retail banking. Yeah. Okay. And so ba banks that, that he said to, we are not doing retail banking. They are all going to retail mm -hmm. banking. Yeah. That shows yeah. that yeah. there's so much money in yeah. it. Okay. I don't know what the feedback like between banks, the banks and the Apex Bank. Can they go back to the Apex Bank and say, Uncle, 
we know you have um, all this because they're the policy makers. Yeah. Just adding to what she said, you are the policy makers. Our, cl our, our clientele or our customers are crying. Can you cut this down? Is it that they don't have any interface direct with them? Um, even as a body, I or think once the policy is they they have have they they have have they have they have interbank they have they they have they have NBBC. So they they are they not going back to say that? Oh, is it a policy is not? Um, can, you cannot. Perhaps have they were not aware. I mean, I don't. Do you think so they are aware? Why advocacy is also important. Yes. You, you see, also they have a lot of meetings with yeah. banks. Um, some I, monthly, some weekly, and all of that. Okay, another thing again I want to say is that sometimes when things perpetuate this way uh -huh. is because probably we've not complained enough. What yes. I think we should do, um, I see people don't want to follow the route until get justice for any wrongdoing in the process of transaction. Mm. If you make transaction, it fails and you have been complaining. There is a place you take your complaint to CBN. They do deductions in your account. I've seen people follow it up. They write and they copy all the appropriate agencies that we get back to get back their money. And they do it. And when you see every Nigerian like we are doing now, as they hot, everybody's talking. Mm. We p follow it up. When this barrage of complaints come to CBN, mm. they have to sit up. Okay. And the regulatory f and the sanctions that are necessary is being meted to any fucking, uh, financial institution that have uh, uh, have uh, aired. So I think it's our constant complaint, constant about following it. up that, okay, this deduction was made. Mm. Why was it made? And I don't agree with it. Like mm. the man who complained for 1,000 deductions yes. from his account, all he needs is to just write to CBM, go to CBM. There's a particular department in CBM that is out for that. So okay. when people start making this kind of complaint, okay. the regulatory body have to... To so add to that, okay. yes. do you know that recently, in one of the banks in Nigeria, a customer's complaint led to them unraveling a 40 billion naira fraud? Interesting. Yes. Wow. Interesting. Wow. One customer. Yes. Good one. So... Banks need to up their checks and balances mm, internally. Mm -hmm. Adeline, what have you been doing your research on? She's been working on transparent communication and upholding consumer trust in our financial institutions. Maggie, please take it from here. They ask us to be saving money. And we are saving money. Why, is it, why are they returning our money? Why are they returning our money? They will be returning our money. Are we the ones supposed to be paying their NEPA bill? Paying the uh, engineer, waiting, waiting, whatever. You don't put the same in that person. It's unfair. It's unfair. Research indicates that banking customers want convenience when it comes to financial matters. In line with this, interest rates, some other unexpected charges that flow without request come as a surprise to customers. As many reveal that, this is not only hindering effective savings culture, but in addition discourages some from keeping their money in banks. Many agree a lot of banking policies are mainstream, but argue about financial inclusivity propagated by the Central Bank of Nigeria. Whatever charges banks are charging their customers is based on the laws and banking regulations. Uh, I do not believe that the bank can just wake up and charge anybody on transaction uh, illegally. Uh, where that happens, uh, we have such infractions, you know, happen once reported to the bank, that bank will be punished or penalized. There are so many charges like uh, SMS charge, uh, where when the bank sends you a lot of SMS, they charge you like four naira. The maintenance charges, especially for those operating current account. We also have stamp duty. Once you are transferring money from 10,000 above, there's stamp duty of 50 naira. You have transfer charges too. When you transfer, there are some charges, maybe 0.25% or whatever, on what you have uh, transferred. And finally, you have VAT. The significance of transparent communication banking, such as informed decisions, building trust, and avoiding surprises, are said to be fundamental requirements for maintaining customers' trust. I know it very well that the banks have not been educating their customers when it comes to charges, and that is not quite good. We expect banks to educate customers when they are charged. Something happened one time in one bank, I will not mention the name of the bank. I just got an alert. I just got an alert. Big money. 
So I tried to call, I called my accounting officer, why am I getting this alert credit, not even debit? He said, yes, they went to CBN and uh, it's overcharges from their bank. So CBN ordered they should pay it back to the customer. I said, wow. So if that did not happen, I would even know that the bank has overcharged me in the transaction. And I'm sure it's happening to so many people. So uh, it does need for education. Experts believe that offering competitive risk is more than a market strategy for it is a way of showing commitment to customers and supporting their financial aspirations and building trust for a long-term financial relationship. And for big-time customers, they also have a negotiation with banks. So no, you can't, I have volume. I have volume. That's why they, you see people leaving from one bank to another bank. And a good bank, will not, a, a reasonable bank will not allow you to lose a big customer because you say, no, you can't charge me one per mile for this volume, it will be much on us. Let's negotiate. Let's negotiate. And the good bank is okay, let's negotiate. We're going to, uh, some banks even go to negotiation where there are zero percent charges on that customer. To this end, customers are looking for more customer satisfaction with personalized services and are willing to switch providers if they do not feel their needs are being met. Therefore, experts advise that banks enhance transparency by providing educational resources that explain such charges before, during, and even after they are established, as this will provide clarity, show support, and include customer feedback in the short and long term. Okay, okay, let's take a few messages here. Nigerians are very, very happy. They are commending our expert analysts here. Mm. They say thank you for making the time to even be on Weekend Deal today. Okay. Because what you're doing yeah, is a call to <laughs> national service and you're providing clarity in areas where many had grey ideas. Okay, Kingsley from Delta State further says that. The attitude of the bankers can yeah. also be looked into. Mm. He said, little matter how small the complaint is, yeah. the responsibility of the staff is to listen and, and to be polite and courteous. Empathy. He said, gradually, politeness, courtesies are departing from the banks. True. They will say, ah, is it not? Mm, they are, they, you don't have your time. As in, True. How much is he even coming to sweat yeah. here this morning for? Kingsley is saying that it leaves, it puts a damper yeah. on that person's esteem and it can spoil your mood and attitude for the rest of the day. We'll take a few more. Good morning, weekend deal. I'm, I'm Imano from Abuja. Thank you for this very, very important topic. Let me ask you, for example, what happens when we tick SMS to say we want to receive our alerts through SMS? They will also charge us for this. We know that bank, banks are involved in investment. They invest our money, especially when it's large sums. Can they use the interest they make from that money to subsidize these charges? That's the uh, um, Imano from Abuja. Someone says here, thank you, Weekend Can you discuss the issue of contract staff? It's prevalent in the banking sector. That's a deviation, though. He said there's a case whereby staff are kept on contract for over seven years and they're not converted. Some are even eventually laid off. That's yeah. a diversion. But if, if our guests would like, they can look it's at it. We can do. Thank you for this very interesting topic. What happens when there's a transaction and the sender and receivers are the paying receipt. charges on one transaction. I send, I pay. I receive, I, I pay. pay. The so names to banks. We will not call the names <laughs> of those banks. Yeah. Let me start from Mars. You Mars. see, uh, I, I've said that earlier on. In that case, just go to the consumer protection in CBN. And there's another department in CBN. I cannot remember the particular acronym for it. Hmm. Just go to CBN, make inquiries, and lodge your complaint. They will do that. Now, on the case of... Um, contract staff, case of um, banking attitude. You see, um, the banking institution from when it evolved, we bring in banking professionals into the banking sector. But when certificate turned to meal ticket, that if you have certificate of chemistry, physics, whatever, mm -hmm. as long as you have somebody to get you come into the bank, there's tendency that you will not be taught, you will not come with the natural ethics that come with banking. I see it a lot. Um, we see people who, doesn't have, who don't have that empathy, who don't have that emotional quotient, uh, 
to be able to empathize with customer who has issues and sometimes probably uh, are, you are dressed the way you dress. So I, I think this is something that the banking committee and some other people who regulate banking training should take up and also to enforce and begin to uh, do mystery shopping mm. so that uh, some of these things could be nipped in the board. Mm. So um, for contract staff, I know very well they have, we have, even uh, Nigerian level, has, uh, Nigerian level mm. has called out for it. Most uh, the banking committees have also said no contracts because you are handling people's money. You are handling people's money, billions of naira, and you are getting a contract staff who is being short paid. He can be tempted okay. to do such things. Okay. As a Muslim, it is incumbent upon you that you must update your will every two nights. Yeah. That's what Rasul Salah said yeah. in a hadith. And when you also look at Anissa, verse 11, it details who are entitled to inherit you. And as a Muslim, you're also expected to state your debts in your will so that it can be paid on your behalf from your wealth before your wealth yes. is shared amongst your successors. Mm. These are the standards as a Muslim. Okay. And That's these are the references. Beautiful. Thank you, Dr. Okay, Anshant. so in your, your, your parting words, yeah, so I, I Also, uh, we, we also need to always make a disclosure. We must have people we open up to to tell them what our assets are probably our lawyers, and they're also cheap wills. I know of um, uh, a, a banking asset management that, that offer wills for like 5,000, as cheap as that, okay. to write your wills, so uh, your investment and will. I also want to also go back to financial advisory. Oh. Please, whenever you have transactions that you know that is not too well, please get those receipts, snap them, keep them for reference. Do not do transactions, and sometimes, Go to your bank, ask them to give you your bank statement. Yes, it comes with a fee, it comes with a cost. It's also to sometimes scrutinize your financial dealings. Uh -huh. It's very, very important. See, whatever you do with the, a third party, make sure you are conscious. Get documents, get everything, and whenever you feel that you've been infringed, seek redress to the last. Don't say, because some of these okay. people, they know that you don't seek redress. Go. We, we have to go. Well, thank you very right. much, so, yeah. Dr. Aishat Adaviruko, yeah. former you. banker mm. and CEO, Master Coach Hub Limited. Yeah. You have really something? enlightened us yeah. today. <laughs> wow, we have one second. Uh, okay, protect your passwords like you protect your underwear. <laughs> Please. Uh, like, uh, thank you. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> thank you. And Mazi Chukudi, James Okura for business analyst and management consultant. Thank you for your patience and <laughs> diligent explanation so that Nigerians can take something tangible away from our conversation. Patience? Yes. Let's just see. We can't keep quiet anymore. Yeah. If you see anything, say something. Yeah. You cannot just lie down there. I think the conversation has started and we hope that it continues as you deal with your banks. Meanwhile, the bank is still the best place to save our money. Thank you. We'll see you see again you. tomorrow on the same show weekend. We're still talking about shortchanging Nigerians. And are we being shortchanged, really? Yeah. God bless Nigeria. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye. <laughs>